But that's not what happened at all. Not today. Because when I began walking down the hall to the stairs, she stopped me, my secret favorite, and gestured for me to come close. I approached her by the office window, wondering what the hell. I was scanning behind her to be sure no one else was in the office. She was alone. It was okay. She put her hand over mine, the one with the silver snake on the finger, and I knew she had seen through my pathetic disguise. She asked me about my friend. She knew I was looking for her because I had been asking everyone and their mother had they seen her. She wanted to know had I found her. I shook my head now. She was holding onto my hand with care. She was radiant in her sorry, and eyes full of that old kindness. Her hand gave me unbelievable energy and warmth. I was about to walk away again, but she wouldn't let go. Wait, she said excitedly, and disappeared, then opened the door to the office and pleaded for me to come in. It was all very strange, but I knew she had only the best of intentions, so I went inside checking first to make sure no one was watching. The ferns, of course, did not count. But the cameras? She told me, don't worry, the cameras were off. She had turned them all off. She led me quickly back to the room where they reviewed the tapes. She said again, don't worry, there were a few minutes we would be alone. She had something to show me and did. She gave me a chair and urged me to sit down. She rewound some tape got to the place where she wanted, then breathlessly told me to watch. And I did. I watched. And my face got warm, then hot. And I think I was starting to shake as I saw what I saw. She fast forwarded after the first couple of minutes had been played, then rewound and fast forwarded, trying to find the exact place. I wanted to get up and leave, but I couldn't. Something in me needed to see. All the while, my heart beating faster and then slower, actually. When she played me the second critical part of the tape, the cameras had recorded sometime in the past. I don't know why, but my heart does that sometimes. When there's a real crisis going on, when I ought to be having about the worst panic attack of my life, my heart slows down rather than speeding up. In my wildest dreams, I could not have imagined this. My secret favorite had become some messenger from hell. And she couldn't console me, only look at me with worry and hold my hand. I begged her to give me time, but she pointed at the clock. We had no time to lose. The men were coming in soon. I listened as the relic of technology grinded wheels, spinning tape, this way and that. I could hear the effort in the machine as it pulled up the slack and wound the tape around and around. Round and round. That goddamn rat song came into my head. You put an arrow through my heart. She got to where she wanted and forced me to look up. She pressed play for the third and final cut, promising me it was the last one, pressing her free hand into mine, and watched me with great and greater concern as I began to lean forward to see what was so clear on the screen before me, squinting when there was no reason to squint. And then I half collapsed forward in the chair with my shoulders caving in and my back curling, and my hands over my eyes and the floor coming up, not wanting to believe. She tried to comfort me, my secret messenger from hell and bless her kind heart. She could not.